Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm having myself a lovely cup of tea, an 07 brew. Yeah, it's got my own brew of tea. Now, I'm going to start the morning talking to AI and have AI talk back to me. Now, I need a subject matter, a subject matter that will stir the imagination, I suppose. Right, here you go. I'm going to talk to AI. This is Copilot. Copilot AI. And I'm going to just talk to it about bricks. If you've not heard of bricks, is here you go. I'll ask, I'll ask what bricks is. Here we go. Look. Good morning, Copilot. Can you tell me whatever you can about bricks? Certainly. Go. Let's delve into the fascinating world of bricks. What is bricks? Definition BRICS is an intergovernmental organization comprising Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, and the United Arab Emirates. Evolution, initially identified to highlight investment opportunities, BRICS has evolved into a geopolitical bloc. Its member governments meet annually at formal summits and coordinate multilateral policies since 2009. Significance. Combined, the BRICS members encompass about 30% of the world's land surface and 45% of the global population. These countries are among the world's largest by population, area, and GDP. Asterisk asterisk BRICS vs. G7 asterisk asterisk. Rivalry. BRICS is considered the foremost geopolitical rival to the G7 bloc of leading advanced economies. Initiatives. BRICS has launched competing initiatives, including the New Development Bank, the BRICS Contingent Reserve Arrangement, and the BRICS Basket Reserve Currency. Praise and Criticism. Views. BRICS has received both praise and criticism from commentators. Challenges. Its impact on the global financial landscape remains dynamic and subject to ongoing developments. In summary, BRICS represents economic autonomy, global influence, and an alternative to the existing order. Its journey continues to shape international relations. Okay, now BRICS, those countries involved, they're trying to set up their new currency. Now, every single time another country, like um, uh, Gaddafi's country, Libya, wanted to set up their own currency, they got invaded, squashed, didn't happen. Every time a new currency has tried to emerge, they've been obliterated, which um, makes me a little bit nervous since some of these countries inside of the BRICS nations are already sort of in the crosshairs of our axis of evil, as we brand them. You know, Iran, China, uh, <laughs> Russia, you know, they're, they're the three main players. So, here you go, Let, let's ask a question about the currency. The new BRICS currency is said to be backed by precious metals. What would happen if we move to that currency? How would it affect the US and the UK? Just wait for it to answer. The potential establishment of a new BRICS currency backed by precious metals could have significant implications for the global financial landscape. Let's explore how it might affect the US and the UK. Impact on the US dollar. The US dollar currently dominates international trade and finance, accounting for about 90% of all currency trading. If the BRICS nations establish a new reserve currency, it could weaken the dollar's position. This process is known as de-dollarization. A stable BRICS currency might reduce demand for the dollar, affecting its value and global influence. U.S. sanctions and trade wars. A BRICS currency could weaken the power of U.S. sanctions. Countries using the new currency might be less vulnerable to punitive measures. The ongoing U.S. trade war with China and sanctions on China and Russia play a role in this context. U.K. implications. The U.K., while not part of BRICS, would still feel the ripple effects. If the dollar weakens significantly, it could impact UK trade, investments, and financial stability. The UK's close ties with the US mean any major shift in the dollar's status would have repercussions. Gold and silver. Precious metals backing the BRICS currency might affect gold and silver markets. Investors may seek alternatives to the dollar, potentially boosting demand for gold and silver. In summary, a BRICS currency could reshape the global financial order, impacting both the US and the UK. However, the exact outcomes depend on various economic and geopolitical factors. OK, I know this isn't the most interesting of subjects, but at the same time, I'm finding AI a very good tool. I mean, this is just co-pilot. This is the thing that's on edge as standard. If you use the mic, it actually talks back. I you can learn all sorts within moments of this. I mean, all of that would have took me shed loads of Google searches, watching YouTube videos, going through adverts. This, this just cuts through all of that. 
you can get your answers super darn quick. And I know it's not the most interesting of subject matter while you're having a cup of tea, but at the same time, hardly any of this is on mainstream news. Now, the new currency that BRICS is working on is said to launch in October of this year. Now, considering some of the big players like China, for example, they actually bought up a lot of US and UK debt what if they said, OK, we want our debt repaid, but instead of using dollars, we want you to pay in this new currency that's backed by precious metals. Or if you can't give us the new currency, maybe just give us the precious metals instead. I think this is a massive power play. I honestly do. And uh, it's a little bit of an odd one. OK, and the goal of BRICS is de-dollarisation. They actually deliberately are setting out to weaken and de-dollarize the world. In fact, Saudi Arabia, the people that are backing the petrol dollar and backing the dollar, have moved their backing away from just the dollar to open up to new currencies, including this new one. So one of the precious commodities backing this new currency could be oil. And that's got massive ramifications. So anyways, let's, let's ask about de-dollarization. So the BRICS nation's main objective is de-dollarization. Would you say that the actual BRICS nations is just another trade block, like a trade agreement? Is it something the West should fear? There we go, and we'll see what comes back with on that. The BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa go beyond being a mere trade block or trade agreement. Let's explore their objectives and significance. BRICS objectives. Economic cooperation. BRICS aims to encourage trade, cooperation, and growth among its members. It seeks to improve their economy's access to markets. Development financing. Institutions like the Contingent Reserve Arrangement, CRA, and the New Development Bank, NDB, finance infrastructure and development projects within member nations. Political coordination. BRICS strengthens political discourse and coordination on international issues. It advocates for modifying global governance institutions to better represent emerging economies. Social and cultural exchanges, the alliance promotes interpersonal relationships, mutual respect for diverse cultures, and social exchanges among member nations. Beyond trade block, BRICS represents a significant portion of the world's population, landmass, and economic output. It challenges the political and economic power of wealthier Western nations. While differing priorities exist among member countries, BRICS remains an important forum for cooperation and pursuing common interests. Should the West fear? The West should pay attention, but fear might be excessive. BRICS seeks a more equitable international order, not necessarily confrontation. It's a dynamic force shaping global relations, but cooperation remains key. The West can engage constructively with BRICS to address shared challenges. In summary, BRICS transcends a simple trade bloc, it's a strategic alliance with economic, political, and cultural dimensions. Okay, so I'm just going to ask another question about the countries that have tried to set up their own currencies and their own banking system in the past and what that could mean for ramifications for BRICS. Here we go. Other countries in the past, such as Libya, have tried to set up their own currency. Now, I don't think that went too well for those, those countries. Do you think the West might intervene to stop BRICS from setting up their own currency in quite a major way, in the same sort of way as in the past? Hmm. The recent expansion of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, to include five new members Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the UAE has raised questions about the implications for the global financial landscape. Here are some key points. BRICS plus ambition. The BRICS Plus group demonstrates a higher degree of geopolitical ambition. Its increased scale and inclusion of heavily sanctioned regimes make it appear explicitly anti-G7. The group aims to undermine the dominance of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency, but the degree of commitment varies among member countries. Complex situation. While BRICS Plus seeks to challenge the dollar, the situation is complicated. Asterisk asterisk Russia, Iran, and China asterisk asterisk, these countries are more committed to undermining the dollar. India and the UAE, they prefer their own currencies to play a bigger role. Brazil and South Africa, settling trade with China in renminbi, RMB, is sufficient for now. Global impact. BRICS Plus represents 22% of the world's export market volumes and has significant fossil fuel production. Its actions could potentially disrupt global economic activity and impact the dollar's role. Historical context. 
While past interventions have occurred, the BRICS Plus situation is unique. The West will closely monitor developments. The ability to stop BRICS Plus from setting up its own currency depends on various factors, including political dynamics and economic interests. In summary, the West will likely pay attention, but whether it intervenes significantly remains uncertain. The BRICS Plus Group's actions could reshape the global financial order, but the situation is complex and multifaceted. Hmm. So, a lot of the actual member states have got the same objective, the same goal of de-dollarization. But there are some countries that benefit from having the dollar, such as India and so forth and so on, like it just mentioned. So, I don't even think it is a threat yet. But if this currency takes hold, it's supposed to launch in October of this year, I think give it another two years, if it does manage to take a foothold, it could have massive ramifications. But that's speculation. I'm just saying it's, it's worthwhile keeping your eye on this one, on the BRICS states and this new currency that's starting to take place. It's very interesting, or at least I find it very interesting. I don't know whether I finished my cup of tea, I found it that interesting anyway. But what I find more interesting is just how cool AI is getting in answering these questions, you know? It's freaking awesome! Well, I find that it is. If you're not using it daily or, 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 or weekly or whatever, it's actually far better than hitting up Google and doing a search that way. I seem to get better answers to what I'm hoping to find and an understanding of the world through AI. I know that it's programmed by people and they put their own sway into it, but most of, most of this is just internet driven. And of course, this is using Edge. So yeah, it, it's not a bad tool to be fair, people inside of the viewerverse. Or at least I don't find that it is. I think it's awesome. Okay, last question. Here we go. So could the West join BRICS? Could America become a member of BRICS? Or the UK? Could they become a member of BRICS? Certainly. Let's explore the criteria and possibilities for joining BRICS. Guiding principles for BRICS membership. BRICS operates based on principles of mutual respect, equality, solidarity, openness, inclusiveness, and consensus. A new member state should align with these principles, contribute to strengthening BRICS, and be an emerging or developing country with regional and strategic global influence. Eligibility features considered. While there's no formal application process, certain features are considered. Asterisk asterisk economic size asterisk asterisk, a substantial GDP, example, India suggested a minimum of $400 billion GDP for new members. Trade volume, a significant trade volume with existing BRICS members, example, India suggested a minimum BRICS trade of $50 billion with the new member. The Western BRICS. The West, including the US and the UK, is not currently part of BRICS. Joining BRICS would require alignment with its principles and meeting the eligibility criteria. While it's theoretically possible, it would involve significant geopolitical shifts. In summary, while the West could theoretically join BRICS, it would involve substantial considerations and alignment with BRICS vision and values. Hold on, but all those BRICS values actually sounded pretty interesting. Um, almost like very sort of left-leaning. You need to be diverse, you need to be... Hold on, come on, come again. Please, can you just list the actual values for joining BRICS? Shared commitments. One of the founding values of BRICS is a commitment to restructuring the global political, economic, and financial architecture to be fair, balanced, and representative. BRICS operates based on principles of non-interference, equality, and mutual benefit. In summary, BRICS represents economic autonomy, global influence, and an alternative to the existing order. Okay, I'm failing to see how the actual criteria and the values of BRICS differ to the values and criteria that the US and UK have just basically in their culture. I mean, the whole mutual understanding, the benefit of all, surely this is something that the West already has ingrained. You raise an interesting point. While there are shared values across cultures, let's explore the nuances between BRICS and Western countries. BRICS values. Mutual understanding, BRICS emphasizes mutual respect, equality, and solidarity among its diverse member nations. 
Benefits for all, BRICS seeks to balance global power dynamics and promote development within its bloc. Non-interference, BRICS respects each other's sovereignty and avoids interference in internal affairs. Western values. Similarities, the West, including the US and UK, also values mutual understanding, cooperation, and benefits for all. Differences. Asterisk asterisk historical context asterisk asterisk, Western countries have a longer history of global influence and established institutions. Geopolitical alliances, the West has NATO, the European Union, and other alliances. Economic systems, the West's market-oriented economies differ from BRICS mix of systems. Cultural context. While values overlap, cultural context shapes priorities and approaches. BRICS emerged as a response to perceived Western dominance. In summary, while shared values exist, the specific contexts and historical trajectories of BRICS and Western countries contribute to their distinct approaches. Okay, so by the sounds of things, the West are a little bit interfery. Well, that's what I gathered from that. I don't know about you guys inside the viewers, but that was that was my interpretation. I don't know whether they're going to a letters join. Okay. So in short, are you saying due to the West sort of, I don't know, geopolitical sway and how they sort of like to control things could mean that the West are not allowed to join BRICS? Is that what you're trying to say? Please put this into simple terms. Certainly. In simple terms, while the West shares some values with BRICS, joining BRICS would involve significant shifts. BRICS formed partly as a response to perceived Western dominance. While it's theoretically possible for the West to join, it's not straightforward due to historical context and differing priorities. Right. Okay. So there we go. Uh, I think that kind of sums it up, to be fair. And this whole new currency that they're trying to put together it depends on how the actual member states of BRICS use this currency. If they use it for more than 50% of their trade, all of these countries inside of BRICS start only using this currency. The de-dollarization is going to happen rather rapidly, even if it's just at 50%. So we've got to see what actually happens, but I just want to put this on your radar because it's not in mainstream news. Mainstream news is not talking about this new currency that BRICS is trying to put out there. A lot of sources online are saying October of this year. Speaking to AI, they say that it's more likely to be 2027. General Gaddafi tried to launch his own currency. What actually happened? Was there Western intervention? Muammar al-Gaddafi, the former leader of Libya, indeed attempted to establish an independent African currency. His plan was to create a pan-African currency based on the Libyan golden dinar, backed by gold reserves. However, this move posed a challenge to Western financial interests. Here's what happened. Gaddafi's vision. Before 2011, Libya achieved economic independence under Gaddafi's leadership. The country had its own water, food, oil, money, and state-owned bank. Education, medical treatment, and housing were considered human rights. Libya boasted the world's largest irrigation system, the Great Man-Made River Project, which brought water from the desert to cities and coastal areas. Gaddafi aimed to spread this model throughout Africa. The threat to Western interests. Gaddafi's government held substantial gold reserves, 143 tons of gold and a similar amount in silver. He planned to use this gold to establish a pan-African currency, challenging the dominance of the US dollar and the French African franc. This move threatened the West's financial system and influence. US NATO intervention. In 2011, US NATO forces intervened in Libya, leading to chaos and civil war. The irrigation system was bombed, and the country faced devastation. Gaddafi was captured and brutally killed. Libya's economic independence was shattered, and the dream of an African gold-backed currency faded. In summary, Gaddafi's attempt to create an independent currency faced Western intervention, impacting Libya's stability and economic prospects. Okay. Alright. So thinking back on all of that, do you think that the West might intervene? Maybe these BRIC nations, they need to sort of like destabilize them. Do you think they might target Iran, Russia, or perhaps China? As an AI language model, I don't endorse or support violence, harm, or destabilization of any nation. My purpose is to provide information and engage in positive discussions. Regarding your question, geopolitical dynamics are complex, and any intervention, whether military, economic, or diplomatic, has far-reaching consequences. 
Here are some points to consider. Geopolitical rivalries. Geopolitical tensions exist between Western nations, such as the US and its allies, and countries like Iran, Russia, and China. These tensions stem from differing interests, historical events, and ideological differences. Intervention stratégie. Interventions can take various forms. Asterisk asterisk military asterisk asterisk, direct military action, such as invasions or targeted strikes. Economic, sanctions, trade restrictions, or financial pressure. Diplomatic, negotiations, alliances, or diplomatic efforts. Each approach has implications and risks. International law and norms. International law prohibits aggressive actions that harm other nations' sovereignty. The United Nations Charter emphasizes peaceful resolution of disputes. Consequences. Destabilization can lead to humanitarian crises, regional conflicts, and economic repercussions. Cooperation and dialogue are essential for global stability. In summary, while geopolitical tensions exist, promoting dialogue, understanding, and peaceful solutions is crucial for a stable world. Okay. Okay. Right on. Here we go. I'm all for peaceful solutions myself, so what sort of peaceful solutions did the West actually present to General Gaddafi? Certainly. When it comes to diplomatic solutions, discussions and negotiations play a crucial role. In the case of Muammar al-Gaddafi, there were diplomatic efforts, but the situation was complex. Diplomatic efforts. The West engaged in diplomatic discussions with Gaddafi's regime. These efforts aimed to address concerns, find common ground, and seek peaceful resolutions. Challenges and outcomes. However, the situation in Libya was multifaceted. Asterisk asterisk internal dynamics asterisk asterisk, Libya faced internal tensions, political dissent, and regional complexities. Geopolitical interests, various Western nations had differing interests in the region. Arab Spring, the Arab Spring uprisings further complicated matters. Legacy. Ultimately, the situation escalated, leading to military intervention. The aftermath of Gaddafi's downfall left Libya in turmoil. In summary, while diplomatic efforts are essential, geopolitical realities and internal dynamics can shape outcomes. Well, to me, what Gaddafi was trying to do, bring water to the whole of Africa in exchange for some of the precious minerals and to help back their currency, but not only that, lift Africa out of poverty, sounded kind of good in a roundabout way. I, I can't understand why the West would want to blow up all those pipelines. I mean, sure, take out Gaddafi, but then perhaps maybe work on that infrastructure and actually carry out to fruition that whole idea? I could. The idea that Gaddafi had about bringing water to the whole of Africa seems like a very noble and good thing. Why is it that the West, when they took out Gaddafi, didn't continue on with that idea? Gaddafi's vision of bringing water to the whole of Africa through the Great Man-Made River Project was indeed ambitious and noble. However, the aftermath of his downfall led to instability in Libya, which affected the continuity of such projects. Geopolitical complexities, internal tensions, and competing interests played a role. While the West's intervention had various motivations, the focus shifted away from Gaddafi's initiatives. It's a reminder of how complex global affairs can impact well-intentioned endeavors. It's funny that it goes to town when it's... Yeah, I don't know, people. AI as good as it is. I mean, this whole video was about AI, but not all us also that, but also a, a, a subject that's interesting me quite a fair bit, as you can probably tell. But at the same time, the world stage and economics and po politics, just for me, it, it doesn't feel like common sense drives it. It feels like greed drives it. I mean, the people at the top are the people that always seem to benefit. The people at the bottom, the people that don't have water in Africa, haven't benefited from this, have they? You know, this is kind of what I'm getting at. And it's almost like, oh, so the BRICS nations are focused on emerging economies, economies that have got precious metals at the moment. However, they're getting all those precious metals extracted out of their country and not getting their full worth. I think we might see a transformation of wealth with some of these emerging economies and that's a massive incentive to join the BRICS nations. I just think that this is going to grow. I think BRICS Plus has already demonstrated that BRICS is growing. It's got a lot more people interested in joining. 
There's a couple of countries that if they did join, I feel that it could reshape the balance. At the moment, it's about 40% of the world's population. Some of the member states are quite large. It's not going to take much to push that over into the 60%. And as soon as the majority are using BRICS and using the BRICS currency, that's when I think things might start to change in the economic sort of tables of inside of the world banking systems. And I, I can't see the banking system of current day sitting back and doing nothing about that. The Rothschilds, Rockefellers banking system, the International Monetary Fund, I don't think is going to sit back and do nothing about that. And I already think that they're moving chess place pieces to promote a future forever war. I really do hope that these moving of chess pieces doesn't result in something bigger happening. It only takes one person to make a false move or to interpret its signals incorrectly and someone to start pressing a button and, and inadvertently cause massive escalation. And it just makes me think that if they did that, it would hold off this currency, this shift in economic sway. I don't know, people. I, I just feel very nervous about all of this. I'm trying to read between the lines. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just make myself another cup of tea, people. Hey, what do you think? Sound up in the comments. Let me know. I mean, this is this is completely left field for my actual uh, channel. I wanted to push AI as a technology, but I also wanted to point out to you that there's a massive economic shift happening right now that just isn't getting any airtime for some reason on all mainstream news networks. Right now, it's all about... The vote here in the UK, the vote over in the US, are we being distracted from the bigger picture? Let me know. Until next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. A cup of tea with Captain Steve. Things that entertain, things hard to believe from movies game. And internet news from UFO sightings and debates and different views. Cup of tea, cup of tea with Captain Steve. Everyone likes a good cup of tea, unless you like coffee, but that's not really me. Oh, I love an English breakfast cup of tea with Captain Steve. Cup of tea. Tune in again and again. Hit that like and subscribe and ring the bell. It's free and costs you nothing and is as entertaining as hell. Cup of tea, cup of tea with Captain Steve. Everyone likes a good cup of tea. Unless you like coffee, but that's not really me. Oh, I love an English breakfast cup of tea with Captain Steve.